curve C is defined by y to the power of 4 minus 2x squared plus 8xy squared plus 9y equals 0. Show that dy by dx is equal to x minus 2y squared divided by x cubed plus 4xy. So this is implicit differentiation. We're going to differentiate each term one by one. The terms containing x are differentiated as normal. The terms containing y, if I have to differentiate a function of y, uh, let's make that clear, not function of x. So if I'm differentiating a function of y, then what we do is differentiating a function of y. I differentiate the function as I differentiate any other function, but then remember to multiply it by dy by dx. So working through, looking at part a, differentiating y to the power of 4. Well, differentiating y to the power of 4, I get 4y cubed. And then I need to multiply it by dy by dx. Differentiating minus 2x squared, I get minus 4x. Differentiating 8xy squared, this requires a product rule because this is a product of two functions. So just off to the side, as an aside, if I state that u equals 8x, that v equals y squared, just going to differentiate du by dx equals 8, and dv by dx, differentiate y squared, I get 2y, and remember to multiply it by dy by dx again. So then I get plus, I put it in brackets, it's good practice to put it in brackets, v du, 8y squared, plus u dv, just plan ahead here, I've got two constants, so 8 times 2 is 16, write the algebraic terms x and y in alphabetical order, and dy by dx, and so it just pays whenever you're using the product rule, or the quotient rule, whatever the situation, just when you multiply it, doing a cross multiplication of u and v, dy, du and dy, dv, just plan ahead and think about how would you write that term when you multiply it out. It can avoid ambiguous terms and it can mean that you save steps in your working. So 9 differentiated is a constant, so it disappears, so this is all equal to 0. Okay, now at this point I want to collect all the terms in dy by dx, but I also want to take all the terms that don't have dy by dx over to the other side. So I'm going to add 4x to both sides of the equation. And I'm going to subtract 8y squared from both sides of the equation. So that on the left-hand side, factorizing the dy by dx out, I get dy by dx times by 4y cubed plus 16xy equal to We've take, added the 4x to both sides, I've subtracted 8y from both sides. Now I want to divide both sides by this bracket here, so divide by 4y cubed plus 16xy. So we get dy by dx is equal to 4x minus 8y squared over 4y cubed plus 16xy. Now, in a mark scheme, it generally says that when you're trying to show a result, it has to be convincing. So at this point, what I do just to be convincing, and it also helps when you're actually just working normally and you don't know the answer, is I would factorize top and bottom, because there's a common factor of 4 on this top term. So I get 8 take the 4 out, I get x minus 2y squared. I would factorise the bottom, there's a common factor of 4 there as well, so I get left with y cubed plus 4xy. And this gives the examiner no doubt that you've understood how the step's taken, because I can now divide the top and bottom by 4, and I get dy by dx is equal to x minus 2y squared over y cubed plus 4 x, y as required. Now just bear in mind, if you haven't been asked to show this, this is a useful step anyway, because it can avoid any silly mistakes when cancelling common factors top and bottom, because this way you know that you only cancel these factors outside the front of the brackets, and you don't over cancel or cancel where you can't actually cancel. So let's have a look at how the marks are awarded in this question. 
So you get one standalone mark if you have got this first term here correct. You get a second standalone mark if you have correctly differentiated the product of 8xy squared to the expression written here. Next, if you have got both the 4xy and the constant as zero, you can get a third standalone mark. Finally, the final standalone mark, B1, is awarded for getting to this step here if you have shown convincingly, so things like this, shown you're working out, so I'm talking about all of this stuff here at the side, the annotations, how you've rearranged to give a convincing answer as to how I get to this dy by dx. Okay then, let's look at part B. Part B says that show that there's no point on C where dy by dx equals zero. So just got a little bit of space here. I'm having to squeeze it in because I thought I had more slides. So let's just roll this off a second, make sure I've got enough space to answer part B. So part B, essentially I'm setting dy by dx equal to zero. So x minus 2y squared equals y cubed plus 4xy equal to zero. So if I times both sides of the equation by y cubed plus 4xy, then I get x minus 2y squared is equal to zero. Rearranging this equation, so add 2y squared to both sides, we get that x is equal to 2y squared. Now I'm going to sub this into y, so sub into my equation y. So now I get y to the power of 4 minus 2 lots of 2y squared squared plus 8 lots of 2y squared times y squared plus 9 equal to 0. So because I could only get a relationship between x and y for when dy by dx is equal to 0, I then need to substitute this in and solve the simultaneous equations true because this relationship x equals 2y squared must be true and the relationship of the implicit equation must be true at these stationary points. To simplify, I get y to the power of 4 minus 2y squared is 8y to the power is 4y to the power of 4, but then we get 2 times that, so I get minus 8y to the power of 4. I then get plus 16y to the power of 4 plus 9 equal to 0. Tidying up again, I get 17y to the power of 4 minus 8y to the power of 4, so I get 9y to the power of 4 plus 9 equals 0. Divide by 9, y to the power of 4 equals, uh, sorry, it isn't equals, I'm skipping ahead of myself there, is y to the power of 4 plus 1 equals 0. Subtracting 1, y to the power of 4 equals minus 1, and y to the, taking the fourth root, well, we can't take the fourth root, check it on your calculator. There are no real roots of y to the minus 1, so it doesn't exist. Therefore, no solution. Okay, so how are we awarded marks in this question? Well, initially, if you get to this relationship here, the x is equal to 2y squared, you can have one standalone mark. If you have substituted and shown that you've substituted into y, you get a method mark. If you get to and simplify it to this expression, 9y to the power of 4 plus 9 equals 0, you get an accuracy mark. And this is for the correct answer only at this stage here. And then if you get to this idea here and are able to show that the solution does not exist, you get another accuracy mark. Include, and it has to include an explanation. Okay. 
Well, I hope that all made sense and that you understood my explanation.